Once you've placed all your objects onto the plank surface, we can now go into action mode to continue drawing our drill. Let's talk about timing points. When we scale up player number one for the first time, you'll see the timing line light up down below, and the first timing dot on every player's line always starts at zero seconds. Now, if we slide that first timing dot to the right to 0.5 seconds, that means that player number one will start moving at 0.5 seconds into the drill, doing the default 20 kilometers an hour unless you change it to 10 or 14 kilometers an hour. So let's take number one and we'll draw number one out over the blue line, make a tight turn and stop by the pile of pucks. When we click on the last timing point of player number one, you'll see that player number one is doing 20 kilometers an hour. You can see that in the red part of the timing line, it gets there at 5.57 seconds. Now, in the second part of this, we're going to show you how to change speeds while a player is skating. We'll start player number two, skating at zero seconds. We'll advance number two into the zone. We'll now add one timing point. We'll advance the player a little bit further. We'll add a second timing point. And then we'll pull player two out over the blue line, make a tight turn and stop at the blue line. Now when we check that last timing dot, you're going to see the player 2 gets there a little bit earlier at 5.21 seconds because player 2 left a little bit earlier than player 1. Now we can adjust the speed and the timing of player 2 by sliding that last timing point left or right. If we slide it to the right, we can slow that player down to 18 kilometers an hour, arriving there at 5.57 seconds as well. Now with the two other timing dots on the line, we can adjust the speed of the player during the skating. When we grab that timing point and we move it to the right, you can see in the red that the speed is dropping to 10 kilometers an hour. When we grab the next timing point for the second part of that, you can see that the speed is dropping in the second section to 17 kilometers an hour. And then to the right of that, you can see that the player will eventually finish at 26 kilometers an hour. Now let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. When we hit play, you'll see that number two starts earlier going slower but then accelerates to 26 kilometers an hour to finish exactly the same time as player one. Now let's go back into action mode and continue drawing our drill. In the next part we're going to show you how to do a stop and go action. So now both players get there at 5.57 seconds but we want to have them start at 8 seconds. We do that by going down the timeline of player number one and we add two timing dots. And we grab that second timing dot and we move it to the right along the timing dot to 8 seconds. And you can see in the red part of the timing line that there's zero kilometers an hour, meaning that the player is standing still for that two and a half seconds. Let's do the same with player number two. We scale up two and add two timing dots. Grab that last timing dot, slide it to the right to create that space of time where the player is waiting. And we'll finish that at eight seconds. And again, when you look in the red, you can always see the speed of the player going zero kilometers an hour. So now let's take number two and advance number two into the zone to the point where number two is going to take a pass from player number one. We'll now scale up player number one and because player number one is close to pucks we can take a puck and then we'll advance player one into the zone. And you can see as we advance player one there's a great timing dot that's following player number two. This shows you the exact same time and position of the player as we move the other player along the ice. So at 9.4 seconds, that's where player two would be at that gray shadow dot. So you can see player number two is slightly ahead of player number one, which is perfect for passing because we want to make the pass ahead of player two so that the puck and the player arrive there at the same time. We click pass, we click the player, and we move into position to shoot. Now you can see this creates a gray puck action timing dot down below when that player receives the puck at 10.3 seconds. When we highlight number one, you can see we have two puck actions. When we take the puck at 8.1 seconds and then when we make the pass at 9.4 seconds. These timing dots cannot be moved. So you must make sure of the positioning and timing of everything before you make a puck action. We'll now click shoot for player two, touch the net to finish the shot and this will create a shooting timing dot down on the timeline. When we open it up, you can see with the options of backhand shot, slap shot, snap shot, or the default wrist shot. Let's make a big slapper. Number two will now skate down in the corner and up along the wall, ready to take the next pass. Now we'll advance number one down into the zone and make a pivot action right in front of the coach. We go across and we touch the backwards icon. We drag the player in the direction that we wish to go towards the wall and a place to take the next pass. And you can see this creates a pivoting icon on the drawing as well as a pivoting dot on the timeline. 
you can go right or left with your pivots. So let's pivot to the left this time to make sure the player is facing the coach ready for the pass. Now let's activate the coach. We'll now take up a puck at exactly 0.1 seconds, but we now must create a space of time on the timeline of the coach where the coach is waiting for number one to get into position. We do that again by adding two timing dots. We grab that last one, we slide it to the right to create a space of time on the timeline where the coach is waiting for number one to get in position. You can see as we advance the timeline the positioning of the players. And again, we want to make that pass about two meters before number one gets into position so that the puck and player get there at the same time. We can now click pass and touch number one to complete the passing action. And to make it look a little bit more natural, we'll have number one continue to skate backwards just a little bit before we go up and click the forward skating icon and have the player pivot to forward skating. Now you can see that the different timing dots this creates. The gray timing dots are puck actions and we have the two pivoting actions. Now the pivoting actions are skating actions so we can adjust those. We can slide those left or right to adjust the time at exactly that player is going to make that pivot and you can see the speed changing to either side as we move it. Now the next part we're going to make a pass from number one back to number two. So you can see when we activate number one we cannot see the gray timing dot. That means the gray timing dot is under number two so they're exactly the same time. So we want number two to be slightly in front of number one when we make that pass. So when we activate number one the next time, you can see the gray timing dot is about two meters behind. So number two is a perfect position to skate onto that puck when it comes across. We click pass, we click number two to finish the passing action. We'll now draw number two out over the blue line, make a tight turn and stop with the puck just over the blue line. Now the next thing we're going to show you is how to avoid an offside situation. We're going to have number one come out, make a tight turn and turn towards the blue line. And you can see when we make that turn, the gray timing dot behind number two is slightly behind. This means that number one is ahead of number two at this time in an offside position. So we must slow number one down. So we take that last timing dot for number one, we slide it to the right. You can see the positioning number two as we move it. And we're going to slow number one down to about 18 kilometers an hour so number two can cross the blue line before number one does. We can now advance number two into the zone and we'll advance number one as well. Now let's take a look at that in 3D. At the bottom of your screen, number two will start a little bit earlier but go slower but then accelerate to finish exactly the same time as number one. They'll wait two and a half seconds and move in and number one will make a pass to number two. Number one will then pivot towards the coach to keep his eyes on the puck head up ice and they both make a turn after the pass number one slows down to avoid the offside situation